Greetings and hallucinations. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's December and a little chilly up here in Idaho today. It's 40, 40 degrees right now. Our high may be 42 on a good day. Yeah. But you know what? I'm a happy camper up here. <laughs> Life is good. So enough of the politics. Let's move on to what we're going to be covering today. Um, what are we covering today, by the way? Whack them. Whack them. Whack them. Okay. Whack them all. And for those that are borrowing my link to get in, um, you can, I think you can right click on your image and rename it. I know a couple people are on my link today, so that's okay. And yeah, we'll go there. And first things first, hopefully you can see my screen. Yep. And. West Coast School, June 9th through the 14th. Take a full week of Photoshop, which is basically zero to 60 in a week. And we'll go from zero and probably go up to 90 this year because it's going to be fun and a lot to learn. June 9th through the 14th at the University of San Diego. It is a blast. You can go to westcoastschool.com or ppconline.com to find out more information. But there it is. We'll close that one out. Say goodbye to that one. Goodbye. Next up is April 28th through May 3rd. We have Photoshop 0 to 60 in a week as well at Texas School. You can go to texasschool.org to sign up for that one. So same, same class, a lot of fun. So today we're going to be talking about setting up your Wacom tablet. And I do say Wacom tablet. So where am I? Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> not California. I'm not in California anymore. Not that's not for sure. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, to get to setting up your Wacom tablet for a Mac, you go to system preferences. Or at the very bottom, it says Wacom tablet. Some people call it Wacom. Some call it Wacom. I just call it Wacom because that's the way I was taught to say it. But there we go. Um, I'm going to start with the pen tool number one. <laughs> I really enjoy using the pen tool. Um, you can get so accurate and concise with it. It is wicked cool. Um, when you get into the setting here, tip feel, I've got it in the middle. You can adjust it. So if you want it to be soft or firm, um, you can adjust that one at a time. Go in and feel which one works for you the best, depending on the pressure that you do. Um, I don't push very hard on my pen, so I just keep it in the middle. Um, that's how it came. That's how I got used to it. Um, double click distance. What this does is if you try to double click on something, uh, you tap it twice, it will do the double click. And in this particular case, if you tap and then move over a little bit and tap again, it will either read it because it's within the distance or say nope you're out of distance so in the middle for me it's kind of like saving me from accidentally double tapping double tapping or double clicking when i do that i got to be careful of that sometimes um, i turned the touch feature off on my wacom tablet because i rest my hand on there and when you do that things start showing up or you're image starts spinning because your hand is resting on the on the tablet so be careful of that tilt sensitivity i don't worry about the tilt sensitivity i don't use the tilt um, there are some brushes where you can do the tilt and it alters the brush for you basically what you're doing is tilting from like 90 degrees straight up and down tilting it to the side either left or right causing a little bit of difference in the way the brush operates. And then when we get to the double click and the basically your um, two buttons that are on the side of your pen, 
I am taking the default and I'm going to turn it to, where is it? Somewhere on here, there is turning it off. Disabled. That's the one. Thank you. That one's disabled. Right click, disabled. The reason why I have it turned off is if I spin the pin a little bit in my hand just to exercise my hand a little bit while I'm uh, retouching, it will all of a sudden click either the right click or the left click and make things happen. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. No, I don't want to do that. So you got to be careful about that. Touch, I've turned it off. Functions. Here's where you get to have a little bit of fun. Um, the express keys on the Wacom Intuos Medium Pro, Pro Intuos Medium, whatever it is, the Pro Medium, um, you can have eight buttons programmed on the side of your Wacom tablet. And for me, I set it up so the ones that I use all the time are what I'm going to use. So my very top button, which is this one right up there, it says keystroke. Well, the keystroke is for doing what I call the claw, stamp visible, stamp everything. So keyboard, keystroke, and I've punched in command option shift E, or on a PC it would be control alt shift e which is what we call the claw and you can program anything you want in there you can almost make an action on that i'm sure but that's the stamp visible so when i want click ok for now i'm going to go to photoshop i'm going to make three copies like i'll add a blank layer do a copy here bring that up above do another blank layer. And I want to do to where all these are combined into one layer at the very top. So instead of hitting Command Option Shift E or Control Up, Control Alt Shift E, I hit the top button. And the top button should, if everything goes right, should, and it's not working for some reason, <laughs> could be. Is it not working because you have that open? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So let's try it again. No, that's not why it's not working. It's just not working. Okay. Stuff happens when you're live, so don't panic over the little things. So let's go back to functions, keystroke, and it's still set for the same thing, so I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. Okay. And then also the next one coming down, I have it set for settings. You go in here and you come down to settings. So what that does, it tells me what it's set for. So let's try this, close this out, go into Photoshop, click on this. Okay, it don't want to, my buttons ain't working right now for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my Wacom tablet, reconnect it, and see what happens. So we'll hit, and you see what that just did. I put my hand over the top of it and it brought up the settings on one side. There we go. You bring up settings and it tells you what everything is on the left-hand side. And then in the middle, both of my buttons are disabled. Touch preference, my touch preference is turned off. I could turn it on, but I don't want to. If I turn it on, yeah, it's not gonna turn on here now anyway, that's okay. There we go. When I hit the top key, it finally did the layer three, made a new layer and perfect. So if I hit 
that's my settings. And it tells me all these things that are currently in use. And what I can do is do a screenshot of this, put it in front of me till I learn each one, um, and then go from there. The next one down. And we'll go back to functions again. Next one down is new blank layer. So instead of coming over to over here and clicking on that little bitty tiny plus sign, I just hit new blank layer and it adds a blank layer. So it works wonderfully. And then if I hit that again, create a smart object or a smart filter. Okay. Do I use that a lot? Uh, yeah. So as you go down, you figure out which ones you're going to use the most. For me, doing the claw, I have no problem. I have big hands. I can hit all the letters and all the um, modifiers to get there. So it's automatically there for me. I don't have to worry about it. There's people with smaller hands. So, oh, put it up there right away. That way you just hit the button and boom, you've done the claw. Stamp visible. Next one down at the bottom layer is create a group. So what I can do is go back to Photoshop. Back in Photoshop again, and I want to make these three into a group. So to do that, it's the very top button on the bottom section. So I've got those selected, hit the top button, boom, it creates a group for me. If you don't like that, you just go in here and you can say right click or just click, fourth click, five click. If you want to select a letter in text, one click, double click would get the word Four clicks gets the paragraph. Five clicks gets select all, if that's what you want to do. You can do keyboard shortcuts. You can do modifier. All this is super easy to fix. So it's in there no matter what you do. If you don't like it, you fix it. And as you're going down the left side, you go, wait, there's only four buttons. There's eight buttons. There's only four here. Well, you go over to the right side. And then you can add the different ones that you want. Um, if I wanted to, the next one down that I have is create a clipping mask. I use clipping masks like all the time. So I'll click here. And the next one down would be clipping mask. Make sure I got the right one. Because I'm create clipping mask, second one down. So here, create clipping mask is not working. So I don't know what the heck's going on here. Made a group. That's okay. There we go. For some reason, it's not playing 100% with me right now because I'm live. That's the way it always works. So, okay. Next one down is disabled, and the next, the bottom one is save as. So instead of reaching up to the keyboard and Command Shift A or Command Shift S, I just hit the bottom button and it should say save as. So it's going in and saving for me. Life is good when that happens. When it works, it works great. When it doesn't work, you're embarrassed. So let's go to Window. Consolidate all the tabs. Why has it got no tab? Something's going on with my computer right now. There we go. Now we're in tabs. Consolidate to tabs. Thank you. And this is kind of how I have my keyboard set up. When I'm retouching, I have my Wacom tablet in front of me. And you can see all the scratch marks on here 
or how often I use it. And that's the area that I use 99% of the time on the right hand side would be my layers and history and actions and all that stuff. So you don't really go to that side of the computer very often. Um, I've got my keyboard in front of me and I can hit the keyboard shortcuts without a problem at the same time. I also have my mouse right next to me as well because I use both the mouse and the Wacom tablet depending on what I'm doing. If I'm working on this image, I'm going to be working on the eyes or working on the uh, skin tone, the hair, things like that. I'm going to be using my Wacom tablet so I can be more accurate, um, especially when working with the hair. I can hit J and it should bring up the last time I used J, which would be the remove tool. And if you haven't played with the remove tool, you definitely want to play with the remove tool. It is so cool. And you'll see it's going to remove the hair. Or not. That's because I'm on too many layers. Okay, flatten image. And I could make a keyboard shortcut or a shortcut on my Wacom tablet to do the same thing, but it's not one that I do all the time, the flatten image. So let's try this again. Take away the hair. Abracadabra, boom. Just that easy. And if I wanted to go through any of my other tools, I hit Shift J, and that'll bring me back to the healing brush. Actually, it took me to the red eye tool. There's remove tool, spot healing brush. And I'll show you the difference between the spot healing brush and the remove tool. So this is the spot healing brush. And it doesn't look too bad there. And remove tool. Normally the remove tool is a whole lot better than the spot healing brush because spot healing brush sometimes will get very soft. This time it took the texture and kept it in there. So life is good. I've got a 32 inch monitor with my Wacom tablet. If I wanted to do dodge and burning on the white here, probably have to go to highlights and then do some dodging and burning. Or because dodging and burning creates a little bit of color abnormality, hit Command Z, Control Z on a PC. I'm going to go to brush, go to my brush tools, my presets, go to my eye brush, and it's 7% lighten in white. And what it does is just whiten it just a little bit. If you want to do a little bit more, you can. And then also the highlight as well. And you go before and after and even zoomed in i feel like the eyes aren't big enough to work with so with the wacom tablet you can get in and get in really tight and controlled versus a mouse which is a pain in the tush to do um, if i wanted to go brown eyes I'd just double click on that color 10 percent in my brown do a couple of strokes there couple of strokes in the right eye. So this is before, this is after. And it just does a little bit of adding color. Some people have really dark, dark brown eyes where they're almost black and you need to get them in there. And with the Wacom tablet, I can control all the way along here as I'm doing it. You have your center button on the left-hand side and you can see on the left, you have cycle layers, brush size, rotate, auto scroll. You can program that as well. So let's go back to there. 
And I've forgotten where to program it at. So we're not going to do that. Go to touch ring and it's under functions. Duh. Thank you, Mel. Touch ring. And auto scroll zoom keystroke, which is command or the option option uh, blah, 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 right bracket option left bracket. So you can make it bigger and smaller by using your uh, touch ring. So if we'll go to brush size. I can spin my finger around the ring. It's in brush size right now. Make it bigger, make it smaller. Rotate. I hate when rotate happens. I should program that one out. And then you got zoom in and zoom out. Auto scroll zoom. So I'm doing the same thing I did with the brush. I can zoom in and out by rotating my finger around the left button. Now, if you're a left-handed person, let's go to pen mapping. If you're a left-handed person, you don't have to buy a left-handed Wacom tablet. There is no such thing. If somebody tries to sell you a left-handed Wacom tablet because it's more expensive, don't buy it. You come into mapping, Express keys on the left. You can do express keys on the top. So you turn your Wacom tablet up. Express keys on the right if you're a left-handed user. So you could do left-handed and have your right hand for the buttons. And then you can do express keys on the bottom. So that's under the pin mapping. And orientation on the mouse, I don't care about. Screen area, oh my God. Some people buy this huge tablet and they wanna make only a certain portion of their screen, like this much of it for the working area. Well, I don't wanna have my hand go all over the place. Well, if you only got that little bitty area, you're going to have to zoom in even more so that you can see what you're doing. I go full speed, zoom in a little bit, and I can paint or whatever I need to do with accuracy. And it's not moving really quick. It's moving it how I actually want it to move. So, so you got screen area and you got same thing with the tablet area. You can tell it on the tablet, okay, I want... This little bit. Well, no, that don't work for me. It might work for you, but that's how I do mine. The eraser tool. As much as I hate to say this, occasionally I have used the eraser tool, which is the top of the pen, the little round nubbin on the pen. That's your eraser tool. You can change it to whatever you want it to do. Me, I leave it as eraser and I'm a happy camper. You can tell it which application you want. So I could add this and add mail in there. Why I would do that, I don't know, um, but you can. And you can also take it out by clicking on the minus bar right here. Click on the minus, say delete, goodbye. And all would include all the Photoshops and everything else that I'm doing. So you can use your pen the whole time if you like, but you don't have to. You can use your mouse when you want to, or you can use your pen, either one. Um, for those that came in late, I disabled my um, buttons, the top and bottom buttons on my pen, because I'm accidentally clicking them as I'm painting or moving it around in my hand. Sometimes I'll spin it just to 
nervous habit, I guess. So that is the fast down and dirty way to program your Wacom tablet. Michael, just as an interjection real fast, when you said, you know, you didn't like to resize your bigger tablet. Uh, I know like Sherry has a bigger tablet, but you do it for so long and you start stretching your arm out so much, it's going to cause a lot of tension on your hand. So she will disable it down to like a, a five by seven size or for her painting, just in those different sizes. So if you find yourself and your arm getting stressed, you may have to reduce that size if you get that larger one because you know, you do that for five, six hours a day, long, long strokes, it's going to cause some tendon damage. Yeah, definitely. And she's doing different than I'm doing. She's painting and using Corel on hers, where I'm doing retouching and um, adding things in. Right. Well, it's for specific needs, so you just have the right. ability to change things down, but just so people be aware that you don't need to have that extra large or just go get the Cintiq, you know, and pay a couple of grand and get that Cintiq, <laughs> right? You know, it's funny because I've had people, I know people that have bought the Cintiq and threw it in the trash. They just did not like it. And other people swear by the Cintiq. So, and for those who don't know what the Cintiq is, the Cintiq is the, it looks like your monitor and you're retouching on your monitor right in front of you basically sit in your lap basically when you're working on it right although i've seen some people that have it up on their desk and they reach over and that would drive me crazy reaching over and painting on your monitor well that'd be a short trip yeah for sure any other questions or comments a little late <laughs> <laughs> we waited for you tony i tried it was uh it was either between making making my wife very happy going to storage getting all the Christmas equipment or making her very sad not getting a dinner. So guess what I picked? <laughs> happy wife, happy life. That's it. So I'm a little late with a, a lot of confidence that I'm going to get fed tonight. Well, you can watch the recording of this without a problem. So. You can yeah. watch the recording while you eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> So how's, everybody other... doing? how's everybody doing? Hey, Michael, I've, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. For, for once, I think I have an intelligent question. I may not have an intelligent <laughs> which, answer, which, but I'll try. Yeah, right. Which which size do you use? I use the medium, oh, the Wacom cool. Medium Pro, Intuos okay. Medium Pro, and I, I love yeah. it. The, the other question maybe is to the entire audience is, has anybody ever tried using an iPad Pro as a graphic tablet? I, I've, I've seen people talk about it on YouTube. Kevin, and you're shaking I, your head. I, yes. I, I have played with it. Um, I like the Wacom tablet better. Um, it just is not as intuitive. It's not as easy. Um, for one thing, you have to keep moving your trying to remember what it is you have to keep moving the the stylus over to the ipad off your screen and then when you need need a menu item you got to go back to the main screen to catch it i think if, if i remember right that's right so and just and wasn't the, sens the sensitivity isn't there as, as much as the wacom in my opinion when i tried it hmm. okay okay well yeah. I, you know i i have no experience and i figured that you guys probably have more experience than i'll ever have i i've gotten used to this <laughs> When you first get the Wacom tablet, you want to throw it in the trash because after working with the mouse for so long, when you want to get from one side to the other, you can bounce your mouse around, lifting the mouse and moving it, lift and move, lift and move. With the Wacom tablet, it's basically what you see is what you get. Where you put your pointer on your Wacom pad is where it's going to end up. Um, it just follows the the pin, whereas with the mouse you can bounce it around. Mm -hmm. um, the pin doesn't do that. You got what you where you're at is what you are. I and, just know that when I changed when I was changing over, Sherry hid my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost what you have to do to you get. You know, it takes a day or so to get used to it. Um, when I put my pin on my tablet i know just about where it's going to land um 
without even looking at the screen because I know by feel where it's at after a while. Um, it's just well, a matter of- I have a question, Michael. Uh-huh. Hey, this is my tablet. I don't have those buttons that you have. Is that an older tablet or is that no, a different model? It's a no, Wacom it's graphic tablet. Oh. Okay. You don't have the Intuos Pro. And are those not buttons across the top? Yeah, those are buttons. It's a yeah. Intuos BTM. I don't know what that means. Did I buy the wrong one? Well, no. Um, go into your settings like we did. Are you on a, you're on a Mac, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. So go to the system preferences, go to your settings, and it should show you where the buttons are, if there are buttons on there. Yeah. And then just program the buttons that you want to program. Okay, so same thing, just my buttons look different. Did I buy the wrong tablet? No. I've had it for about six months, but it hasn't taken three days. It's, you know, Michael, I've talked to you before about it. I know. So hard. <laughs> I... It, it probably took me a year to actually start liking it. Mm -hmm. And I still use my mouse all the time. Yeah. If I'm, yep. if I'm using email or something like that, I'll use my mouse. Mm -hmm. When I'm retouching, you'll see a pin in my hand 90% of the time. Yeah. I'm trying to force myself mm -hmm. to do that, but. Yeah. You, you want to sell it? <laughs> you want to sell it 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it off your hands <laughs> no i never say die i will not give up i will master this no once you get the newer one and i'll give you 50 bucks and pay shipping <laughs> <laughs> i think so speak, speaking of newer um if i can i had a i have a really old one i don't even know what this is called um into three give you an idea how old it is that's old um yeah it's very old but I had a problem when upgrading my computer several times where I couldn't get it to work. Their mm -hmm. software no longer supports it. But through a couple of friends, I found out that there's some hacks out there that people have hacked the Wacom software to work with these older iPads or older uh, tablets. So if you've got an old one and want to resurrect it, I've resurrected a couple of really old ones for my, my laptop. I mean, like 12 years old. And they work just fine. So apparently they're they're tweaking the software to make you buy new ones every of course. so many years. I oh, wonder yeah. where they learned that. Yeah, uh, Bill, uh, and Adobe. Yeah, yeah. built in obsolescence. <laughs> built in obsolescence. Yep, exactly. Um, but there are I, hacks I, out there. So I have a question for you, Michael. Okay. Every, every, time, I, every time I move my uh, pen over, sometimes the uh, the uh, the little wheel on the left hand side mm -hmm. it comes up, and I go like I never got near the wheel. It just kind of ghosts up and have all these, you know, uh, things on there. It's like <clears throat> it just pops up for no reason. And I have to exit out to get, you know, to go back to work. It should go off by itself after a short period of time. Yeah, it doesn't. I actually have to physically exit out. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. Hey, look at that. Also think about, I, I kind of know the answer, but why don't you explain how often you replace your nibs? I actually haven't replaced my nibs very often. And I'll talk about nibs in just a second. But if I push on the button to bring up the circle, it lasts for only, what, two seconds, three seconds max? Yeah. Mine comes up right in the middle of the screen. Yeah, mine won't come over. So, hmm, mm. interesting. I mean, um, I went, I went in the system, uh, in the system's preferences, and cannot find why it does that. I don't know. Now the nibs, this this, this one's uh, the uh, the new one, so it's a brand new pin and everything. And I have a smaller one that uh, I want to get rid of for like fifty dollars and a Chippy. case of pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> We well, want to make some pina coladas over there. That's that? right, baby. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm thinking of it, um, your cord, when you're transporting it in your laptop case or anywhere, don't leave it plugged in to your tablet 
unplug it and wrap it around or put it in like a circle like this, what will happen is the little wire that plugs into your connector will start to fray a little bit or start to short out because of the tension that's put on it when you wrap it around. Um, so make sure that when you pack it up, unplug the cord from your tablet. Okay. okay, nibs. For those that don't know, this is your pin holder that sits on your desk. Inside your pin holder, it's hard to see, but there are a whole bunch of nibs. And nibs are basically your pointers for your Wacom tablet. Mine are, my original one is still available to use, so I don't need to replace it. Um, and I'm happy with it like it is. So when it starts getting really dull and I have a problem, then I'll replace it. I've had this tablet for three or four years. I have not replaced my nibs yet. So, but I do check my nibs. And I had a t-shirt a while back. Have you checked your nibs? I got a shirt from Sandra Pierce. That says You I got that right. <laughs> Sandra Pierce. So if you want to learn about the Wacom tablet, Sandra Pierce is definitely one of those that you need to talk to. She's fantastic at it. So <clears throat> and she's an artiste. I, I'm looking at the nibs that I have, and I have one that has a little white. It's black, but it has a little white tip at the end. Is that for graphics or? You know what? I don't. I don't know. Huh. I've got several different styles. Looks like uh, paintbrush. Some look like just a point. So it just depends on. You know the, the white ones seem a little bit stiffer than the black ones, but I don't know. I've never. Well, yeah, I understand, it, Michael. Those are cha interchangeable more for the graphic and the art type field than what we're doing. Right. But some of those are the same nibs. Well, I got the one pointer, but you can use those for other things as well. And they also sell, if you think this pin is too fat for your hand, they do sell a skinny pin. So it's another 70 bucks out of your pocket. Um, I'm happy with my fat pin. I got big hands, so fat pin works. Fat is good. <laughs> Any other questions? Going once, going twice.